I imagine. So, Michael, let's, okay, let's so hear you. Thank you for your kind introduction. Um, <clears throat> good morning, uh, and uh, thank you uh, all uh, very much for being here. I'm going to address the issues of echocardiographic evaluation for the mitral valve and discuss uh, some of the uh, decisions about um, repair or replacement, either transcatheter or surgical. Um, both the surgeon as well as the interventional cardiologist, when addressing uh, a patient with uh, mitral regurgitation, need to know a few things. Uh, number one, the mechanism. Is it degenerative? Is it functional? Is it mixed? Uh, how about the severity? Is it mild, moderate, severe? Uh, morphology, is there cleft, is there calcification, indentations, uh, and so on. We need to know the leaflet length, uh, the mitral valve area, uh, the gradients across the valve, um, also the left ventricular systolic function, uh, the, um, and uh, as well ventricular septum and right ventricular uh, size and function. Um, regarding degenerative organic or primary uh, MR, uh, however you want to call it, uh, here the defect is primarily on the leaflets or the mitral valve apparatus, uh, as in this case a P2 prolapse with severe uh, regurgitation. Uh, on the other hand, uh, severe uh, functional ischemic uh, or secondary MR, uh, we have a problem primarily due to LV dysfunction, uh, and that may be caused to, uh, because of coronary artery disease or uh, for idiopathic reasons. Uh, here we have displacement of the papillary muscles, tethering of the uh, leaflets, and uh, annular dilatation leading to abnormal coaptation. Um, there's also the entity of atrial functional MR where the atria dilates uh, in patients particularly with uh, atrial fibrillation, commonly these are elderly patients, uh, and that in turn leads to uh, annular dilatation and uh, severe functional MR uh, with a relatively preserved uh, left ventricular rejection fraction. Uh, there, uh, when looking at primary and secondary MR, there are multiple uh, areas that we could look at uh, regarding mitral valve apparatus, the cardiac remodeling, and the characteristics that uh, we can see. Um, but nothing beats uh, three-dimensional echocardiography uh, in assessing uh, and understanding what the problem is uh, of the mitral valve. As in this case, a large anterior flail uh, of the mitral valve or a complex uh, P2 uh, flail with uh, ruptured cords, uh, or a uh, more simple uh, uh, localized P2 flail, or a P3 flail that we can see very, very nicely. And these are images that are very crisp and very um, easy to understand for the surgeons, for the interventional cardiologists, for everybody to be on the same uh, page. Um, uh, the same thing goes also for patients with dilated cardiomyopathy or ischemic cardiomyopathy. We can get multiple information from the 3D echocardiography as to the location of the uh, jet of AMR. Uh, we can, uh, this is a patient with ischemic MR. Uh, we can uh, ascertain whether it's uh, asymmetric tethering of the leaflets with a typical posterior uh, jet direction um, and uh, multiple other uh, information that we can derive from 2D and 3D uh, echocardiography. In addition, we can see whether there's any indentations or uh, clefts, like in this particular area of this uh, posterior leaflet, we see a deep indentation between P2P1 and P2 a very relative, uh, re relevant information for the surgeon. Um, uh, and also we can understand whether there's calcification of the annulus, which is also very, very important to understand uh, the degree and the extent of calcification for any consideration for repair or replacement. Uh, moving on a little bit to um, ass ass assessing severity of mitral regurgitation, the European guidelines from 2017 uh, define severe primary MR as uh, ERA of over 40 with a regurgitation volume over 60. And for the secondary or functional mitral regurgitation, uh, the ERO level is at 20 millimeters square and the regurgitation volume is at 30. Uh, from um, the other side of the Atlantic, the, uh, the US guidelines uh, have kept the uh, uh, severity index for mitral regurgitation at 40, uh, both for degenerative as well as functional mitral regurgitation. So ERO of 40 is considered severe uh, functional and uh, degenerative uh, mitral regurgitation uh, for the US guidelines uh, with a regurgitation volume of 60 and a regurgitation fraction over 50%. Uh, with the understanding that by doing that, uh, we um, um, uh, might be more specific in, uh, in uh, finding patients with severe mitral regurgitation, uh, but we may lose some sensitivity. We may lose some patients uh, who, has, who, who have functional MR with severe uh, regurgitation, but um, uh, don't meet those cutoff cut uh, points. Uh, the ER, um, ERO evaluation by the PISA method is a more 
commonly used method uh, in day-to-day -day practice uh, for assessment of uh, uh, mitral regurgitation with two caveats, though. One, that it assumes that this is a hemispheric uh, PISA, and two, that it assumes that this is a holosystolic MR. Uh, and we know very well that for secondary MR, this is not true, that the PISA and the um, ERO are more hemiliptical rather than spherical. And uh, we also have the patients who have uh, prolapsing uh, mitral valves with mid and late systolic MR, uh, where if you uh, calculate the PISA by uh, freeze frame of the um, uh, end systolic uh, MR, you can get numbers which are very high, but they're not true because we know these patients uh, don't have significant uh, volume overload and do have more benign clinical outcomes and fewer cardiac events. So we have to take those two uh, parameters into account. Uh, moving on to some of the uh, treatment guidelines uh, for primary MR, uh, both the US and the European guidelines um, uh, agree that a symptomatic patient with primary MR needs to go to surgery, uh, and an asymptomatic patient who has reached a cutoff point of left ventricular ejection fraction of 60% or less, uh, or an LV and systolic dimension of 40 or 45, uh, or, uh, or uh, meets criteria for um, uh, mitral valve uh, surgery uh, and uh, repair primarily of the mitral valve. However, we do know that uh, these cutoff criteria of 60% for ejection fraction and uh, 40 millimeters for the left ventricular and systolic dimension indicate that their patient has reached a stage of LV dysfunction, which may actually be irreversible. And uh, patient is in somewhere in this area uh, at this point. So it's the optimal to, to treat these patients before they even reach this uh, uh, slope. Uh, and we know that patients uh, with these characteristics can get a, a perfect repair and still end up having impaired uh, left ventricular uh, function after the procedure. Uh, another index that we could use to uh, uh, maybe to screen and see if a patient has subclinical LV dysfunction is to use the uh, global load strain of the left ventricle. Uh, and maybe that's another uh, marker in a patient with severe MR and normal left ventricular function to understand whether there's subclinical LV dysfunction. Uh, in general, for surgical mitral valve repair uh, for degenerative mitral uh, regurgitation, surgical expertise and anatomic complexity will define uh, the probability of successful repair. Uh, and uh, that's uh, something that uh, it's been well known. Uh, you know, localized posterior flails are very uh, easy in, in, uh, to, to uh, repair. However, more extensive prolapsing, more multi-scalar prolapse, uh, especially if it involves the anterior commissure, uh, if there's calcification at the annulus level, that makes the uh, uh, procedure more difficult. Uh, and these are information that the surgeon needs to have before uh, deciding on a particular strategy. Uh, you know, the surgical techniques uh, include uh, um, a section of the posterior uh, P2 uh, leaflet uh, with sliding plasty, uh, plasty with new cords on the anterior leaflet or the posterior leaflet, uh, commissural plasty in patients who have uh, very uh, commissural uh, flails, or cordial sparing a mitral valve uh, replacement. Uh, and all these things can be done very nicely through, with a thoracoscopic approach, uh, which is very uh, beneficial for the patient. Uh, but before going to surgery, we could provide the surgeon with multiple uh, information based on 3D echocardiography uh, in terms of the annulus area, the perimeter of the annulus, the anterior posterior and the septolateral diameter, uh, the intertrigonal distance. These are all very uh, multiple uh, um, um, detailed information that we could provide the surgeon that may uh, have an impact on their uh, repair um, uh, procedure. Uh, in addition, we need to uh, uh, tell the surgeon if there's a risk of systolic anterior motion, uh, and we have some data showing that a small left ventricle, a tall posterior leaflet, an errant orthomitral angle, uh, coaptation septum distance of less than 25, or uh, LV hypertrophy of the basal septum may indicate uh, a significant risk of uh, SAM. Uh, here's a patient with two P2 prolapse. Uh, repair, however, a severe SAM at the end of the procedure, so I had to go back on bypass and uh, re, uh, re, uh, correct that. Regarding mitral clip and transcatheter therapies for um, degenerative mitral regurgitation, here the guidelines uh, suggest only for patients who have uh, significant symptoms, who are ineligible for uh, surgery, and have a, a life expectancy of more than one year. Uh, there are multiple uh, repair uh, procedures uh, being developed, but the primary ones are the mitral clip, uh, and the Pascal, which uh, is coming out uh, in full force. Uh, and the other ones are the cardio band, uh, which uh, involves the transcatheter positioning of a ring around the mitral valve. Uh, 
regarding the edge to edge procedures. Uh, we have some guidelines as to uh, which patients are more easy, more, more suitable, and, uh, and which ones are more difficult. Uh, for instance, this P2 prolapse is uh, con considered a straightforward case. Uh, things get more tricky if we go to the commissures, uh, but they can definitely be successfully treated. Uh, when we have very wide flails and uh, very significant uh, flail gaps, that's also uh, more uh, challenging situations, but all these things can be treated successfully with uh, edge to edge repair uh, with very nice uh, results. Uh, here also we have uh, a, the uh, introduction of Pascal for these patients as well, which is a, has very promising results. Um, again, an edge to spacer technology that's very promising in uh, CMARC in Europe. Uh, and um, moving on to transcatheter mitral valve replacement of patients with, uh, uh, we have the uh, uh, experience from uh, degenerative surgical valves in the mitral position, uh, but we also have um, uh, participated in the uh, CMARC trial uh, for, uh, um, uh, for the Metronic 12 valve. Here is a patient with severe uh, degenerative mitral regurgitation receiving a Metronic 12 valve from a transapical approach with an excellent result. Uh, moving on to secondary or chronic uh, functional mitral regurgitation, here surgery has less of a role uh, to play and uh, more tra transcatheter options are, seem to be more at play. Uh, these are some uh, echocardiographic features suggesting uh, an increased uh, risk of uh, failure of surgical repair uh, and, and uh, suggest that they have significant global and regional LV remodeling as well as uh, significant deformation of the mitral valve. These are markers of uh, significant risk of uh, failure of the, angle of the pro repair procedure. Uh, 3D echocardiography, again, can give multiple information to the surgeon regarding uh, the size of the annulus, uh, the, regarding the uh, angulation of the posterior leaflet, and other parameters that may be important in uh, devising a repair or replace um, um, strategy. Uh, multiple information have been gained, uh, knowledge has been gained from this study here, uh, comparing uh, patients with severe uh, ischemic, ischemic mitral regurgitation to either replacement or repair of the valve. Uh, with a cutoff point of an arrow of 40 uh, for severe mitral ischemic regurgitation. Uh, we saw that uh, uh, those patients who had uh, plasty, annular plasty, had a 60% relapse rate of severe mitral regurgitation at two years. Uh, so, may, so right now, the guideline uh, for patients who are undergoing uh, surgery for severe ischemic mitral regurgitation is to go ahead for um, cordial sparing mitral valve replacement instead of annular plasty. And part of the problem is that uh, you may uh, reduce the annular size, but the tethering forces on, on the valve remain uh, after the annular plasty. So if you don't do anything about uh, the subvalvular apparatus, then uh, you're going to end up having recurrence of MR. Uh, this also study shows that in patients with moderate ischemic MR, uh, classified as 20 to 39, who are undergoing bypass surgery, uh, the um, um, addition of a mitral valve repair procedure to no treatment at all other than just bypass surgery uh, did not have any uh, real benefit for the patient. Uh, and actually many patients Two with minutes. moderate ischemic regurgitation actually improved with uh, just um, revascularization. Uh, so now uh, for patients who are undergoing bypass and have moderate ischemic MR, it's a 2B indication to repair the valve. Uh, finally, uh, for regarding the mitral clip, we've gotten uh, FDA approval in the United States for uh, based on the co-op study and the uh, tremendously uh, good results that we had uh, in terms of the primary endpoints uh, and uh, in terms of the long-term durability of the repair procedure with a, a significant, uh, very low uh, percentages of patients having significant MR at 12 and 24 months after the procedure. Uh, it's very important to compare the mitral fans um, uh, study with the co-op study in terms of the inclusion criteria and what they considered severe secondary MR. Uh, for the mitral fans, an ERO of 20 or an regression volume of 30 was the cutoff point for inclusion in the study. Uh, for, the, for the U.S. One study, minute. it was actually um, uh, the traditional numbers, uh, over 40 ERO uh, for 4 plus MR and between 30 and uh, 40 for 3 plus MR. Uh, so maybe that's part of the reason that we had such differ differences in uh, outcomes. And we hope that the reshape heart failure study will uh, shed some light uh, on these patients as well. We know that moderate MR may be very important in some patients. And this is a patient who had severe moderate MR for a long time uh, in and out of the hospital with pulmonary edema. But when we did a TE on this patient and uh, increased slightly the blood pressure, we saw that this was actually a torrential MR and did very well with uh, one mitral clip. 
Uh, so that's something to consider. Pascal is also here for functional mitral regurgitation. Functional uh, regurgitation can be considered uh, even if we have multiple jets, uh, uh, very wide jets, we can do multiple devices uh, and have ac excellent outcomes. Uh, and in terms of replacement techniques, these um, the technologies are, are still right now uh, not in C mark. Uh, we don't have C mark yet. They're not readily available, but this is a patient with severe uh, functional MR, dilated cardiomyopathy. Uh, we implanted a 12 uh, intrepid valve with an excellent result. In summary, echocardiography, and in particular three-dimensional, has an enhanced our understanding of uh, mitral valve pathology and function. Transcatheter technologies are complementary to traditional surgical techniques for degenerative uh, mitral regurgitation patients with acceptable results in high-risk patients. Uh, for functional MR, on the other hand, uh, transcatheter techniques, due to their low invasiveness and high safety profile, may become the preferred option for treatment. However, severity criteria need to be clarified further to ensure maximal benefit. And whether to repair or replace uh, a valve will depend on the perceived risk and benefit uh, of the procedures, uh, the randomized data, and long-term durability uh, concerns. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael, for the excellent uh, talk. Uh, it seems that uh, as we enter the, the era of uh, personalized uh, medicine and uh, as compared to prescription medicine, uh, those tools will, will identify pa which patients is suitable for which method. Since we will have uh, transcatheter mitral valves uh, in the future, uh, a wider application, and those, all those systems, the clips, uh, based on the Alfieri technique. Uh, so, not all uh, patients are suitable for one method, not all are suitable for other methods. I don't know if uh, our host, uh, Mr. Sparias, Dr. Sparias, want us to do the, the questions and the comments now or at the end? Okay.